welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're so, so welcome here today. It is Thursday the 24th of October 2024 and I'm coming to you as always from Devon in the southwest of England where I live with my husband, our two teenagers and our two dogs. You're so, so welcome here today. Uh, where can you find me? I am Ruth Loves to Knit podcast on Instagram. I'm Ruth, Lo Ruth Loves to Knit on uh, Ravelry and I have an email for the podcast which is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. As I say, you're so welcome here. To, if you're an OG, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, you know what to expect. <laughs> if you're new here, happy to have you with us and I hope you'll enjoy our wee time together. Uh, grab a drink, grab your craft. It'll be a chatty one as usual. I have a cup of coffee, well, decaf coffee in my nitty, I um, suppose that's brioche, isn't it? Nitty mug, uh, which was given to me well, a couple of years ago. Um, and I have a large thing of water and another insulated mug with tea in it. So I'm here, I'm here for the duration. <laughs> No, it just saves me having to walk back down the stairs. Um, if you were here last time, you'll know I fractured my foot. Uh, it's much getting much better. It's not half as painful as it was, but still swells up like a bap. So it's still a bit uncomfortable to walk too far. And so in a house with many stairs, I have just learned of a morning to bring lots of drinks up to my craft room. Because of this said foot, I have had lots of time to craft. So, um. We'll have a bit of fun together this morning. It is a dull, dull day here, which you would expect in October. So I have overhead shining on the grey hair, lights on, side lights on, but hopefully you can see all the colours that I will be showing you and all the lovely yarny goodness. So I'll take another sip of my decaf pretend coffee. Excuse me, slurpy slurpy. And let's get started. As I said, there's gonna be who knows how long Stop and start as you want, come back to it, leave it, don't watch. It's absolutely up to you. I've got notes, you'll be glad to know, so hopefully I won't stray too far off the beaten track, although there'll be tangents left, right and centre, as most of you know. Um, so yes, we're doing, um, still doing the cal. All the prizes have been sent for everything, for the Ruth Shaw cal, they've all been sent, and I think mostly received. I've sent off the yarn to South Africa, a bit of a shock at the post office um on behalf of my father-in-law so it was a special um tribute to him so we didn't think about the price of the postage but anyway the lady who who runs our post office she's in her 80s bless her and she always says to me well you couldn't get there for that so i couldn't get to to to, to south africa for what i had to pay for the postage but it was <laughs> still a bit of a shock so hope that gets there Hope that's enjoyed, that's all done. So we draw a line under all of those prizes, but we are still running um, a cal till the end of the year, not much longer now. And it's the uh, T&P year 2024. And any twin set and pearl patterns um, that you knit in 2024, pop it on the hashtag or send me an email. Uh, loads of people have sent me emails because uh, many of you keep your Instagrams private or don't have Instagram. Those are all included as well. And we have been drawing prizes through the year. I'm going to give out some pattern prizes in the next podcast. And then I have been slowly curating a really bumper prize uh, for the end of the year, probably um, done in January. Um, I keep looking behind you because it's sitting it's sitting on the bed behind you. <laughs> and I think it'll be a really lovely prize um, for whoever entered. Do you want FOs only because it has been a whole year. Um, and yeah stick them in they're they're building up nicely and if you tag the hat put the hashtag uh tmp year 2024 just go and check that it's definitely there and if you don't see it there do then send me it on um an email that would be perfect um yeah i've written foot thank you for your lovely comments about my foot honestly what next we're all good. We're all good. I still can't drive and we live quite rurally and my husband is going away week after next. So I have to up my game. Uh, he's go Bless him. He's going over to try and sort out his dad's house. Many of you know we lost my father-in-law at the beginning of September. And there's you know, if, you, if you've gone through that, you know there's so, so much to do. 
um, after a loved one dies and him and his sister have to go back to Ireland to sort that all out. Half term next week. Uh, my daughter's going off for the whole week. Bless her, she's not an extrovert. She is gets a bit anxious in um, social situations. And she just found out last night that the friend that she'd booked to go with on, it's called NCS, National Citizen Scheme. Um, it's not too far away, but um, has decided not to go. But Eva's still keen to go, which I'm really, really pleased about. So she'll be away next week. She doesn't stray too far from home. So that's a really, really big deal for her, bless her. And then um, I have to think of what to do with a 14 year old boy for a whole week when I can't drive. You can pray for me. He would happily sit and game all day, but I don't think that's good parenting parenting skills being involved there. So we'll have to think um, what to do with that. I don't think he wants to learn to knit somehow. And then uh, I am planning on going to Stitch Fest on the 2nd of November. It's just the Saturday in Nabbit. So if you're going, do come and say hello. We went last year and loads of people came up and said hello. But I will be, still probably be on a crutch, so don't stand too close. I will give you a hug, but just don't stand on my foot. Quite scared about that. Um, I'm going with my lovely friend Caroline. We seem to have decided we're the team to go to each yarn shows. Um, she's hopefully driving because I can't go otherwise. Um, uh, but if you're going to that, um, hopefully see you there. I didn't get to the last yarn show, so I have saved up a wee bit of money to be able to enjoy myself there. Um, if you've never been before it is it's lovely it's a bit um there's not really an area to sit and knit which is what I would love um it does have an area upstairs that you can get food but it was absolutely packed last year but such love some lovely lovely vendors at it and very easy to get to and very easy easy parking so those are two things that are important to me um and uh, maybe see you there so that's what's sort of happening in our lives, um, if anybody cared. <laughs> but I also, before we get into knitting, I told you it would be chatty. Some people don't like it. So just fast forward to the, you'll see me holding things up. Um, I want to talk about three charities. Um, one, you'll have heard me talking about Tell, Tell I'm Blue in the Face. And we have, sorry, rustling. We have gathered up. These These are blocked, believe it or not, just not packed for this beautiful bag and I think there's about three more pairs to be added for um, Marie Curie Sock Quest. I think that's brilliant. Look at the yellow. I've got something in my mouth. The yellow is shining off it but um, we are going to send those off to Marie Curie Sock Quest. If you follow Flower Power Fund, trying to say that not in my accent, Flower Power Fund <laughs> on Instagram you will get the address of where you need to send those to or if you can't get onto Instagram give me a shout and I will give you the address if you've been knitting for the uh, Marie Curie Sock Quest and Marie Curie Sock Quest if you haven't if you've not watched before is um, run by a lovely Dr Sarah who works in the Marie Curie hospices here in the UK and she uh, her mission for I would say I've been doing it for at least three or four years is to give a pair of yellow socks because of the Marie Curie accident, quite in vogue today with that, isn't it? Uh, for the Marie Curie um, emblem is the daffodil, yellow, um, to give yellow socks to every patient um, in the hospice over Christmas. And last year she got so many, she was able to give them to relatives too. So that's a nice wee present for them in the hardest times of their lives to be able to look down and see some yellow socks on your feet and be cozy maybe it's quite good i've knit all different sizes i think i've knit 11 pairs i knit all different sizes small to size 11 and um, a lovely lady called rita in my knit group has knit some too and then sarah another lovely lady i gave them all the yarn to knit with as i have a plethora of yellow yarn and um, she's going to pass those on to me so we can get those away. So chuffed to bits that we're able to donate these again this year. Um, some are plain, some are patterned. Um, you can see a nice little twin set and pearl sock in there. So thank you very, very much to anybody on Sarah's behalf, to anybody who has knit. Um, then um, a lovely uh, charity that I saw online. That I just want to highlight. I think they were at Rhinebeck. I saw a lot of them 
um, with different designers and different podcasters at Rhinebeck. But if you're in America this or Canada, I suppose, this one might apply to you quite well. And it's Knit Socks for Sam. And that's at Knit Socks for Sam. I'll put everything down below, all the details down below. Um, and it's about, where's my phone? Because I've, I've, they're um, trying to raise awareness and money if they can for um, a, a condition called vanishing white matter. Yes, I've written, a, I did a screenshot of it. And it just, I'd never heard of it, despite being a midwife, despite being a nurse, I'd never heard of it. So vanishing white matter disease is a rare disease affecting the central nervous system. It has a progressive, debilitating and terminal pro prognosis. There is currently no cure or treatment for vanish vanishing white matter disease. But the, the Sam is the most gorgeous wee boy. He's in a wheelchair, as you would imagine, but has the biggest smile you've ever seen. And they're wanting to to draw awareness to this condition. It's his teacher who contacted me. Um, and if you have second sock syndrome, this is the charity to um, support. Now it doesn't make sense probably us sending socks from the UK or Australia or wherever you are. But if you're in America, you can send either pairs or single socks. You'll see Sam in the beautiful photographs in single socks. I have a Sam in my house, so it, it means a lot. And, um, they are going to try and sell those off to raise a bit of money for charity. So go, they have a um, website, which is socksforsam.org or they're on Instagram and they replied to my message very, very quickly. So if you that's something you um, think you could get involved in, um, if you think um, that's your solution to your second sock syndrome, they don't have to match. I presume they can be all different sizes. Then we could those people over in America or Canada could bless uh, that charity with socks as well. And then last but not least, in November, I have decided to do the 30 minutes a day for Bone Cancer Research Trust of knitting. I knit far more than 30 minutes a day. In fact, I've knit nearly all day, every day since I've broken my foot. Um, but I thought, what a way to raise a wee bit of cash. So I'm going to put a link down below and a link on my um, Instagram that if you want, you can give as little as a pound. All goes to an amazing charity. We've all been touched by cancer through our lives. Marie Curie does an amaz amazing job. Um, Bone Cancer Trust, I'm sure, does an amazing job too. They're always having to raise money because they get so little funding into research and all the rest of it. And the little bit that we can do would go a long way. So I've decided to do that. I've set up a Just Giving um, fund and I will try and put the links, which I'm not very good and very technical, but um, I'll try and put it down below. But obviously no no bother if that's not your thing. So those are the three charities I wanted to highlight today. Um, if you need to know anything more about them, get in touch um, and I will do my best to help you out with that. Right, 12 minutes. That's the worst yet, I think. Sorry. But I haven't got to talk to very many people in the last uh, three weeks since I broke my foot, so I'm making up for it now. Right, FOs, let's not no, let's nonsense and get into it. Okay, I have four, I think. Yes, four. Some of them, all of them you've seen before, so that's good. Okay, well, the first ones are these beauties, and I have forgotten to bring in. My husband bought me a bag of licorice all sorts as a prop, and I've forgotten to bring them. I didn't even eat them. I didn't even open the packet. Oh, well, you know, the thought's there. <laughs> Let me get the labels out. So this yarn was sent to me by my lovely Instagram friend, Nancy Wheeler, who is, I think, as we speak, en route to England for uh, to see her family. I think she's originally from here. And this was knit in this gorgeous yarn. She sent me... Um, two identical skeins 50 grams and a pink um, mini i could nearly get away with knitting if i did no i couldn't rest wise up i'll use it for something else um and this is turtle pearl striped turtle toes and the colorway is all sorts of fun And as I said before, my favourite sweets are licorice all sorts. I know, I know. It was a very, very big discussion <laughs> at one point, whether you were team licorice all sorts or team anti licorice all sorts. Look at those though. <gasps> it 
they are I full um disclosure I completely forgot that I had the pink mini I started with the pink mini and never used it again but sure <laughs> doesn't matter these were for me look at that matching look it's perfect look right down to the toe these were for me until my daughter saw them and I don't know what 52 do I get away with these <laughs> I don't know but she wants them so she gets so much enjoyment out of her hand knit socks. She'll only wear hand knit socks now. And as a mum, if your kids get enjoyment out of something, that's fine. So these are going to Eva. She wears hand knit socks every single day and she absolutely loves them. So thank you, Nancy. I enjoyed knitting with him, but I'm losing them. <laughs> so again, I think, is it Canadian? Doesn't say. Turtle, Turtlepearl.com and perfection absolute perfection so if you're in the canadian district of the world you might already know them and want to buy some so there you go and then the sex that's just vanilla socks then the second pair you haven't seen but they have been on the needles for i don't know how long i remember last time i said I, because i was stuck at home i've lifted out some of my language and whips and i don't have many language and whips i'm not one of these i was watching mouse's makes podcast yesterday and she's got 30 and so has um oh who did she say? i can't remember who she said had 30 and they were having a competition to get them down but i generally it's generally like a sweater that i just haven't got on with and i rip things out no problem but these have been on the needles forever because they're the most boring socks i have ever knit <sighs> covering up these are a size 10 to 11 pair of socks beautiful yarn it's not a problem but gray socks come on can you guess if you've watched for a while who these might be for he's not knit worthy i have started a jumper for him in the past and it turned into a jumper for me. Yes, these are for my husband for Christmas. I started them ages ago and I completely lost any will to live, but he's gonna hate me. <laughs> I love color. He wears grays, blacks, navies, perhaps green. And I laughed, I, put, I knit these for him and they're going to be for Christmas. He doesn't, he wouldn't even notice if I was knitting them anyway in front of his face. The yarn I use, it's lovely yarn. It's just a very boring sock um, otherwise, but comfortable, nice to knit with, will be lovely in his shoe. He is very hard on his socks and very hard on his shoes. So um, I'll see how these go. Um, so the grey is Love Hand Eyed. Love Hand Eyed was the first um, hand dyed yarn I ever bought because it was like only £10 a skein or something. I got this at Aberdeen um, Yarn Show and that was before we moved here and we're here five and a half years. So it's been in my stash for a while. It's called Fifty Shades of Black and it's 75 merino, 25 nylon, 400 meters. And because they're a large size, it's only a wee no one left of the wee, um, the 400 meters. And then the stripe I've had in my stash for at least probably the same length of time and it is all wool vans wool and it's micro stripe it's just it was two by 3.25 grams a lovely friend of mine just a wee while ago sent me a care package with some of this different color micro striping in and now that i know that they'll do toes um i'm gonna do this more often <laughs> i just know he's gonna ask me for a black pair oh this is well i love him so that's the two pairs of socks off the needles Good big massive socks with just a wee bit of excitement at the toes. But it took a long time to get down to there. <laughs> anyway, oh, I can smell it. I did them in soak. It smells gorgeous. Hang on to have a wee, another wee sip of my coffee. I have the window slightly open because I sat down, to, went, came into podcast and could not find my tripod. It never leaves this room. I only use it for this podcast now fair enough the bed behind you is a bit of a mess i searched the place so it was a bit hot and bothered so i opened the window and i can't actually reach it now so i hope the road noise isn't too bad there are sheep in the field you might hear them bleating um but i hope it's not too bad whenever i come to editing so 
let's move on because there's a lot to say. <laughs> so my third finished object is the one that I said you'll either love or hate last week. Not the pattern, but the actual yarn colour and not the yarn either because the yarn's gorgeous to knit with. And it's this one here. It's a flying fox shawl by um, Olga Fahim, who's Gotham Knits. Now it's going to blow out. It's so bright. Look at that. You can see there's lattice work, there's eyelets, there's garter. It's blowing out. It's so bright. <laughs> um, I just basically knit until I'd no very little yarn left. It's not showing up well because it's so bright. Now this was going to be for me. I thought I love this. This is done in um again old stash fluff fibers. I apologize. I need my glasses tightened and they keep falling down. And it was from Christmas 2022 Merino and Island DK um and a really good um length 243 meters. So I have a wee bit left which I think I might use for a jimmy jab, the colour work for a jimmy jab. So I was going to just keep knitting until I'd used it all, but I thought it's going to be just such a massive shawl. But I have decided that this is going to go to a friend of mine who absolutely loves colour, loves different things. You're just not really getting. So it's as soft as soft as soft. I have knit these before. Maybe this is about my fourth one, Um, but I've done them in plain colours. Um, but I think it works okay in a in a speckled colour too. So as I say, this is the Flying Fox Shawl. That's it there. By Olga Fahim. And of course that's on Ravelry. So we'll put that over there. That'll be gifted next time I actually get out of the house. <laughs> and then my last finished object, modified heavily, is what I'm wearing. Now before you say it, it's puckered because I'll tell you the story. Right, let's see, where are we? Where did I put the, where did I put the pattern? Oh, there's a, let's see if we're looking. So this is, has been, well, first of all, it's been on the needles for over a year. It's from the Shetland Wool Week, 2023, and it's this one. Does it look like me? Could that do for my um, thumbnail? Let's hope it does. There you go. Um, uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought I want to knit that. Absolutely. But it's bottom up and I don't know what it is about bottom up, but psychologically it wrecks my brain. It's the most simple thing in the world, but um, it just seemed to take forever. I knit it on Tuesday nights in a car park in the middle of Dartmoor when I used to take my son to... Um, cadets army cadets because I had to sit in the car for two and a half hours it's too far to come back home and um it was perfect for that and then of course the summary wasn't at it and all the rest of it and the structure is that you knit the uh, knit the body then you knit the sleeves separately which actually I loved because you didn't have to this big sweater flinging around um you know and lots of material and then you joined it at the on you joined it onto the body and then you knit the yoke. But I'm just peeping out. Um, it was so long in the needles, and I do this every time I forget to make notes, that I when I cast the sleeves on, I cast <laughs> I had a bit of a sleeve done, and I must have decided I didn't want as long a cuff as in the the um pattern. But then when I cast the other sleeve on, I read the pattern. So I had to rip back on the cuff. I think the cuff's meant to be turned up, but I lost the will to live with it and just um, did it. So it's about 10 rows shorter on the cuff. Then um, got up to the top to, to, to attach the rest of the body. And one side of the, of the body, the body stitches were less than the sleeve stitches. <laughs> so I had to fudgy fudgy finagle cast off, cast on, because you graft underneath the arms like a Kitchener stitch. So it needs to be equal stitches. And I tried to, you know, swap them over onto it. It didn't work. So I just cast up, just increased a few stitches and it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
then you did raglan and then finally you started the um color work so in the, the pattern she has used like a light gray i've done exactly the same uh, color work as her isn't it but it looks different doesn't it i've used exactly the same colors from uh, jameson and smith i'll show you them in a minute but whenever i cast off the it was out to about here the neckline and um i just i wouldn't wear it it was slip it was it just looked awful so last night very late on i decided to crochet round it i didn't want to take i didn't want to take out the bind off because it's got a button band at the back i put a picture here and i want to change that as well <laughs> it's got a button band at the back um it's steak so you did the color work and there was a stick for the little button bit which i you don't actually need because this slips over my head it's just for the look of it um so because i did the um crochet which took me ages because i couldn't remember how to crochet um it's puckered it in a bit but i think if i block it i don't really care about the way it looks now so but if i block it oh it's yellow i thought it was white <laughs> i've done it wrong if i block it it'll hopefully flatten that out a wee bit uh, but i just wouldn't i mean it was literally out to out to here wouldn't have worn it um and i thought oh i'll just put a shawl but sure then that's covering up the lovely color work I absolutely love it. Now that it's finished, it's all I want to wear. Getting cooler, getting colder, getting windrier, or clocks change, you want to wear your knits. As I say, the back is fudged. <laughs> I did the steak, no problem. I've done steaks before. I crocheted uh, um, into the sides and that was no problem. But I don't think I read the instructions properly because I'm going to show you this without this nice little yellow line mine is not a yellow line mine's a multicolored line also the buttons um i put on i couldn't find i have a massive button box that some of it was given to me some of it was hand me down some of it don't have to hear I did have it um like a biscuit tin button box and of course didn't have any to fit but i wanted to wear it so i actually just because i don't need to open the buttons i actually just sewed the buttons on and sewed it closed but there's five buttons on the pattern and i have somehow got six <laughs> but i have found after poking again these little jobs and so i'm going to take these buttons off because they're too bulky um i don't like them and i'm going to put these these are about a centimeter smaller i think these would be better so you can see they're tiny tiny um, but I didn't want to do it before I ran out of time last night with doing the crochet. So before anybody says the yoke's too big, it may well be too big. It's so long in the needles. Oh, that's the other thing. When, <laughs> when I put all the stitches on to knit up, I put on the wrong needle. I put on um, at least a size, not like, I think I was knitting with three and it said to do the colour work in 3.5. And I no, I think I was knitting with 3.25 on the body. So that's why it took so long, because I'm not tiny. And the and I don't know if I didn't read it or got fed up. And I just cast on or put all the stitches back on to uh, 3. Point, either 2.5 or 3.5. So the hole from here up is on a bigger needle inadvertently. So I'm going to try and stand up without hurting myself. Oh, what do you think? I love it. You can't really see that there's a difference in the stitches, so it's fine. The raglan, I absolutely love. I love, love, love. Excuse the dress underneath. It's not what I'd be wearing with it. I'd probably wear it with a skirt. Um, but I like the neckline a lot better. I'm going to change the buttons. <laughs> and it's such a serviceable piece. It's just the um, rib at the bottom. I think I have found my sweet spot. I know my sweet spot for sweaters top down. So I think I found my sweet spot on measurements for uh, sweaters bottom up. Now I was going to immediately cast on a sweater for my daughter. Um, and I showed you the yarn last week and the pattern, which was the Willow Pullover by uh, Andrea Gone. She still wants it. But I need a break from bottom, bottom up and she's been very good. 
<laughs> hasn't asked me once for it. So I think we have a bit of leeway on that. She's only a size three or something in it, so it won't take me long to do, but I just need a break. But still to come, I'm all about the colour work. I want all of the colour work. See, I think if I if I block that out a wee bit, it will be okay. I don't even care. Um, so that is my four. They are my four finished objects. I won't be casting on that willow pullover for a wee while um, because I just want something that comes naturally. <laughs> so sorry, I didn't. So the wool I used for the body of this was from Woolly Knit. Um, I think it was gifted to me. I don't know. It was um, it wasn't on the cone. It was in the Hanks. Um, I think it's mist or something, I'm not sure. Um, incidentally, Woolly Knit still have their sale on on their hanks. Really, really good. In British Wool, it's only £10 for, um, um, if you buy two, for um, 200 metres, or 200 grams, £10 for 200 grams, so £20 for a whole sweater, basically. I think it's brilliant. Um, they are sold out in a few colours, but um, I think it's, and then for British Wool, no, that's British Wool, then Merino, it's 18 no, £15, but I think the British wool is the best um, bargain. So that's the body. And then I, this is what I used for my um, colour work. I wish, the only thing I wish, and I am happy, more than happy to use Jameson's or Jameson's and Smith. If they are brilliant for colour work. They aren't expensive and you're not having to buy a 100 gram ball. They're e 25 gram balls, but they don't give you the grams. Because I had some leftovers and I probably would have used those. Um, like they said two balls of this for my size and I have still got this out of the first ball. These will be used, not a problem. I love them. I mean, I absolutely love them. Um, so they'll be used for something else. There's a hundred thousand colour colour work things that I want to do. I might do a hat with these. Um, you'll see these again. <laughs> But I used so, so little of them, which obviously I was only going to use a bit because of this colour work isn't massive. But I wish they would tell you the grams and they never do. They just say one ball of this, one ball of that. Um, um, I suppose maybe they want you to use their actual um, yarn instead of maybe some finger and you've got. So I will put the numbers because no, no point telling you the, but this, but it's exactly the colours that were used in this um <laughs> just in case it didn't work the last time the um the colors that were used in this one it just it just jumped out at me there's so many look at oh, that beautiful there's so many things in here that i would like to there's color there's mitts actually those mitts would be perfect to use some of that up wouldn't they anyway and i've just i showed you last time i've just got 2024 one i highly recommend these there's always stuff in them that i want to knit i've knit something out of every one that i've got I think I've got them for three or four years now and um, yeah it's not the most expensive yarn in the world to use um, if you want to use 100% wool yarn. Um, look at the time, I don't even know why I bother looking at the time. So that's my finished object. You'll be glad to know this is off the needle so I can stop talking about it and I'm gonna get wearing it. Okay we can turn the page whips so i think i'm gonna um name this podcast uh, perfectly imperfect i think this is perfectly imperfect um that's one thing about the pattern it it was there's nothing wrong with the pattern but it did take for granted that you maybe knew a lot of stuff so i don't know i'm not saying it wouldn't be a beginner pattern but um it's not a construction i've done a lot of And things like the button, but sticking, I've done before, so just went ahead and did it. But like the button band and, and different bits weren't clearly, clearly um, done. So, um, and I did fudge, fudge it quite a bit, but I don't think anybody notices. But, um, oh yeah, that's, it's, <laughs> it's the Hattie Yoke by Ella Gordon. That would help, wouldn't it? There aren't many of them on Ravelry. Um, and most people seem to have done the colour scheme that she did but it looks so different when it's done and that's that's much more prominent than than this one but anyway it's what I had in in my stash okay whips so 
actually i'm gonna i'm gonna pause here and move things around otherwise i'll be poking all over the place so i'll be with you in a minute hi sorry about that it just meant i wasn't having to bend down for everything so there's another saga i'm saying the perfectly imperfect <laughs> if you remember where's my patterns last time for my twin set and pearl entry obviously i can't win anything but it's nice to be included in your own um patterns isn't it get rid of that don't need that i had cast on the happy kiss socks by twin set and pearl but beautiful pattern well written wrong yarn so that got ripped out well it got ripped back to the um rib it's in my gorgeous little crafty clegs creations bag which she had a pre-order up and i think it lasted about three minutes for the ones for this year so i i got this maybe two years ago so i cast on the reason the yarn didn't work was it was really splitty now i am not going to um complain about my lovely yarn smith sock yarn you know i love it you know many many podcasters love it this is the color 2k 090 oh, it's pretty good like a raspberry red and um i love it but this particular i find sometimes i don't know whether it's the dye or just individual skeins it was breaking my heart splitting and that happy kiss socks you have to go back into stitches and it just was driving me potty so i ripped out back to the rib which isn't exactly the same as the rib in this one but uh, again fudging it perfectly imperfect and it is the copper conifer socks again by twin set and pearl now i did them in one color uh, and this is what i've got i've finished one so i suppose it's a it's a hole but it's perfectly imperfect <laughs> so so soft but look at the beautiful design look at the beautiful design and then look at the beautiful design feature can you see the deliberate mistake I nudged it all over one look all the way over these literally knit it's the, themselves because a pattern sock just does these are for me until my daughter decides she wants them but no she likes the funky ones I'll keep the plain ones I do them a bit longer in the leg than I normally do because I want to wear them in boots when I can wear two of anything um they are gorgeous and the mistake design feature is right where right here so i obviously did something on the decreases which will be me not the pattern um and you see right there but it it's just where you put your foot in your your shoe i am not correct in it i had sewn off done my kitchener and everything when i noticed it so i'm not correcting it look you can't see if it's like that and you wouldn't have known if i hadn't told you so those are the what did i call it what do they call copper cotton for socks they are my twin set and pearl as i say they knit them they literally knit themselves and this yarn i am not complaining about it it was perfect for these um for these socks but you can see well the, i don't know why i've never had a problem with it before just slightly splitty and i was just driving me potty so i just what is it um ross from friends pivot i pivoted onto a different pattern which is now falling on the floor there we go so that's those will be done for next time um and they are a four stick a four row repeat so once you get onto it you can read your knitting and i didn't even need the pattern it says me who made a mistake but anyway so that's my socks then um i needed a project for my handbag even though i'm not really going anywhere um i have had a couple appointments and i've sat in the car a few times and on saturday my husband took us to launston and my son and i and we went into costa coffee cost a lot coffee um just to get out of the house and i sat and knit my, my son doesn't even care anymore and i just didn't wasn't feeling a sock i didn't want to take those socks with me because there is a i wouldn't want to can't talk and do anything other than vanilla socks so if you've been a viewer of this podcast for a while you will know this beauty inside and out 
I cast on a mindfulness shawl. Now I was looking at my shawl ladder and I only have one mindfulness shawl. Oh no, two, I've got one in cotton. Um, I have given so many away. They're a brilliant gift knit um, and they are what they say, mindfulness, mindlessness, but just a wee simple shawl. Now the pattern is written in DK or sport, is it? Yeah, sport DK. But I have actually knit only one in um, DK and the rest are all in fingering. Um, there's the front. Just a plain wee shawl with a wee peak away edge. And so I've probably had more questions on this than I have on most things. It used to be published by Made With Loops, but she's changed her name now to Heike Gittens Designs. I will put it on the screen and I will put it down below. Um, and she isn't on, um, she's on Payhip, she's not on um, Ravelry, so you have to look it up and I will put all the details for you. And if you just want something that just turns out lovely, maybe you've got that one skein of yarn that is too good for socks, which is exactly the case here. Um, and I, it says for DK, it says to use four millimetre needles. I just knit a wee bit of the tip either on 3.5 or 3.75. If I like it, I keep going. If I don't like it, if I don't like the fabric, I change needles. There's nothing scientific to it. I have never run out of yarn for um, in the fingering weight. Um, I do it to the recommended number of stitches. And if I think of enough, I just go on and do maybe 10 more rows or something, or I just cut it. But this yarn was too nice for socks. I started socks in it and I ripped out. So this yarn is from Ruby and Roses. It was given to me in a sock, in a swap from either Canada or America, I can't remember. And it's Ruby and Roses yarn. I've never had it before. And it's the Princess Tail and it's plump rose base and it is plump. And look at this. I mean, it would have made beautiful socks. It was making beautiful socks, but I just wanted this as a... So I've done quite a wee bit because I don't need the pattern. I could do it in my sleep. I've got a wee toast um, progress creeper. All the colours are coming up quite bright because of the lighting, but it is quite bright. <laughs> so squishy. To have this round your neck, it's just going to be lovely. So, so squishy. And I'm about halfway. So you finish it off and then on the very last bit, you go around one side of it with Pico and it's all explained in the pattern. Um, I have knit maybe 20 of these over the years since it's been put out um, and have given, so that's, I've given a lot of them away. Um, and I keep, I'm gonna keep that in my um, handbag. I've had to take a smaller handbag out and about because I need a crossbody. So once I get back to the one I normally use, I'll be able to have this properly in my bag. But I have sort of earmarked a few um, just really lovely skeins um, that um, I don't even know what, you know, you get them at yarn festivals or you get them in swaps. Um, and um, I'm going to, you're going to see a few of those um, coming off the needles in the future so mindfulness shawl or as I like to say the mindlessness shawl because it's so simple then I you saw this last time this is really going to be a long episode I'm sorry and I've got on really really well with this this is the back to rich hill there is um, a rich hill shawl and then a back to rich hill shawl from Brenda Brayfield and all it is is swapping the colors over um I'm using my row marker, what's it called? It's from the Knitting Gift Shop. I want to show things here. And it just marks, she marks every row. And it just, it's magnetic. And it just, I've had it for years. And it just makes it easier for following, get a picture. So this one is back to Rich Hill. And I am on this part. So I'm nearly fit, well not nearly finished, there's plenty still to go. But um, she marks it all out row by row. And you can tick it off. You don't need a row counter or anything. And this is how far I've got. Obviously it needs a good block because it's got lace work. And it's all tangled up. Look at that. Oh, not my usual colours, but I absolutely love it. So it's like a pink and a duck egg blue. So I've just started the other bit up here. 
If you've never done lace work before, I don't, this isn't a pretty, pretty lace. I've kind of gone off the really pretty, pretty laces, but I just think it's beautiful. It looks so complicated and she has it all done out beautifully. And just to the tip, which is um, just garter. Beautiful yarn to work with as well. Um, it's Nellie and Eve. I'll show you my self-love club <laughs> um, needle stoppers. The yarn is Nellie and Eve. I've got getting through it rightly. She also gives you the weights so that if you've not just got the um, yarn that she recommends or whatever, you can weigh your yarn and know how much you've got left. These are the two colours. And the pink is... The pink is um, Clematis, is it Clematis? Camellia. <laughs> so it's Nellie and Eve, absolutely love. Botanically dyed, no nylon, anything. I am really veering towards that so much more now than, um, you know, the, I love botanically dyed. This, this and gorgeous yarns are probably my, what I'm loving at the minute. Um, it's Camellia. And it's locally sourced and then the bluey one bluey gray is um bird's egg i would say bird's egg duck egg and it is um 440 meters sheep to skein in under 25 miles from wales she's been at a few shows recently so you may have seen her so i am absolutely loving this this is in my i would say i'll get this finished over the weekend um this is in a wee bag i got in a beautiful sale <laughs> from one of my viewers um I mean I bought it but she she watches the podcast lovely autumnal bag like I said last week it was less than a tenner in her sale um duck pull lane and she does watch so hello <laughs> keep up the good work <laughs> and I know some of you said you went over and got her last the last of her stock I mean is that not autumn I hate Halloween, I won't have anything to do with Halloween, but autumn, yes, spot on. So couldn't get nicer than that. Um, then last but not least, and this goes into my last, trickles into my last bit as well. If I knew where I'd put it. Oh dear me. Oh, I've got glasses on and I can't still can't see it. So this is in a bag I have had forever. I cleared out, I did a big clear out. Um, I had two lovely friends come to see me who I used to live and work with in Bangladesh a couple of weeks ago and Ancha is a knitter and we sat and knit together and she took two big massive bags of wool away with her so that was lovely and um, as I was clearing out some of that stuff I cleared out some um, project bags as well to good homes who appreciate them and I found this wee one in the bottom of the bag it's coming up orange it's not it's a rust colour and it's a linen bag from Midwinter Yarns. She don't know she still does them. This was before she moved to Shetland. It's been in, I've had it for ages. Look at the lining. I love a floppy bag and it rolls, you know, and then you do this. And I started a Simon because I have given all my Simons away. Simon is by Twin Set and Pearl again. Where have you been if you don't know about Simon? The Simon Shawl. And I have knit three of these and given all of them away because this, of the shape. They're a very narrow crescent shape. So easy to wear for, and people who don't understand shawls, um, they're easy to wear. And this is going to be my 30 minutes a day knitting. I have decided. Oh, I really want to keep this one, but we'll have to see. If somebody says to me, I love that, I just give it to them. Uh, these are the two colours that I'm using. They're from Bird Street Yarn. They go beautifully together, but much more subtle than any of the other ones I've done. So I have just a wee point done because I kind of stopped thinking I'll do this for my 30 minutes a day. So I'm not going to knit on this again until November. So it's much more subtle than it normally would be. Um, looking forward to seeing Bird Street at um, Stitch Fest to feel and look at their yarn. And this is my... Um, I have it all together, I just can't find it. Sums up my life at the moment. <laughs> so the yarns are, 
I think this one is beeswax, Bird Street Yarn beeswax. And then the other one is Bird Street Yarn and it is um, Bloomin' Lovely. Bloomin' Lovely. And I weighed them like a good girl and that one had 112 grams. So very generous. Um, just so I'll get halfway and then I'll just turn around and um, start the decreases. So you'll see that one again. And as I say, that's going to be my 30 minutes a day. I'm going to set a stopwatch because I find it hard to keep to 30 minutes a day. It's only 30 minutes a day on that one. It doesn't say how much I have to knit on other ones. <laughs> and I will s sort of document it so that you can see I'm actually doing it. And then if you do want to donate a wee bit to a worthy cause, you can. So that's in there. So that's my 30 minutes a day and that's my plans. And I've written here decisions, decisions, because I need your help. Hello. Yeah, I do need your help. So because I am loving, 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 loving the, the um, colour work, I want to start another colour work project. And it's in this truly gorgeous bag. I did a little short on this to show you it. Round bottom, massive. I mean, you can see sweater quantity from the Knitting Swan. It's like a canvas, but it's obviously all quilted. Draw string. It's got any amount of pockets inside and just beautiful. She has an autumn one, a winter one. She's got one with roses on. She's got one with, um, Oh, what do you call them? Um, poppies, go and have a wee look. If you love a delicate fabric, but not delicate as in not hard wearing, delicate um, pattern, go and have a look. And she, she gave me a lovely discount off this and she's given me a wee discount for you. Now, it's 10% for a small, very small maker. That is amazing. For a small business to give any discount is amazing. And the discount code is Ruth. That makes me excited. But it's a one-off. So if you go in and you buy one and you think, oh, I wish I'd bought that, it, it's a one-off. So get everything in your basket at the one time. It basically gives you a free postage, doesn't it? And um, I highly recommend it. It's very well made, came really quickly and lovely service too. This big bag, there's different sizes of bags as well. And there's there's um, needle cases, there's notions pouches, you know. They've got this on the side, which you can add um, a handle to, a strap to as a crossbody. She sells those, but I, I have one that I'm just going to put on. So just those wee details are amazing. Anyway, so use code Ruth and you'll get a nice wee discount off this bag. So what's in this bag? I am going to do the, now, the Porty sweater from the Shetland Trailer by Gudrun Johnston. But there's also a Porty cardigan, which I'll put a picture up here because I don't have the, the um, pattern printed out I have both the patterns which one do I do it takes the same amount near enough the same amount of yarn for each one I'm swaying personally to the sweater but what do you think then I have had this in my stash forever to the point where I was thinking of de-stashing it that's exactly it and this is the body that she uses yeah, in her pattern, this is the colourway. It is well, shade F, FC38. And I had obviously done a swatch before. And it just, look at that, rusty. No, I just finished a cardigan in yarn not far from this. But it would be very different with colour work. <laughs> and I have a whole cone that I got a friend, I think, bought this for me when they went up to Shetland. So that would be the body. And then I have in my stash exactly the colour work colours she used in the trusty wool warehouse bag. Can you see them? So that is the colours. Those are the colours. I might, might, might swap one of these out for one of the colours from this sweater, this greeny colour. I haven't decided yet, just to make it more pronounced because these two are quite similar. And I might swap this out for the tail. 
So do I do the cardigan or do I do the sweater or do I just make up my own mind? So that will be getting cast on. And guess what? It's top down. <laughs> because I, I looked all through my Shetland books. I looked all through my Kate Davies books. I'm actually going to do a little run through some of my books some of these days with you. And I, um, they're all bottom up. So I have to get over it and do my bottom up sweaters. But for now, this is, this is top down. So cardigan or sweater, put it in the thing. And I might just make up my own mind anyway. Then um, the other thing that I want to cast on, I said, to, so I said that I, a few weeks ago, I took two big plastic bin liners of um, knitted stuff to a shop in um, Exeter for teens that are aging out of care. And I think I took my favourite shawl by accident. I love the way my head is at the minute. It could be anywhere. I could have left it somewhere. I could have, I have searched the place for it. And it's the Kyler shawl um, by Isabel Kramer. It's probably my most worn shawl. And the thing I'm annoyed about it is it wasn't probably clean. <laughs> I probably could have done with washing it because I, so the Kyler shawl, I knit it years ago. Um, I knit it in a lovely grey, like bluey grey and um it had silk in it so it was just gorgeous and people commented on it all the time and i do not know where i've put it i have searched the place for it um and it'll probably turn up as soon as i cast on but hey it's not bad to have two i was going to do this for my 30 minutes a day but i just like to get on with this and so i need you to help me now i have two yarns that would do so the first one i got this off a de-stasher off eBay for like an absolute steal and it's Shillister Isle of Sky yarn Um, it's indigo so it'll go all over my hands and it's I don't know how to say that now it's slightly lighter yardage than what um, Isabel Kramer used but look at that now I don't want to have to alternate skeins so it's just going to come out the way it comes out soft as anything so that's that nice blue and I have loads of it or everybody's favorite at the moment is the Kinross now from the sublime to ridiculous light blue to bright yellow well it's not bright yellow it's called gorse Kinross four ply and in the shade gorse and this is um softens up to like butter so let's have the which one? That's not showing up right. That's it there. <laughs> Look, like one of those museums you go to and it's a perspective. I am probably, even though I'm, yellow is my favourite, I probably am swaying towards that. But there's two decisions you can help me make. Cardigan or sweater for the porty. And which one of those colours? Thank you very much if you could on a postcard no down below in the comments um if you don't care don't worry about it i will make a decision i'm a big girl i can make decisions and i will make a decision as i say that's willow sweater for eva is on hold and i desperately need to go to spec savers and get these tightened up because they're driving me potty that's it probably a million minutes because i stopped i don't know how many minutes is 23 minutes um is that everything i think so remember the charities um, even if you don't do anything about them, maybe like and and you know share, and other people might want to to um look into those. Um, I'm going to get these lovely socks wrapped up properly and sent off. Um, so they'll bless somebody this Christmas, and I just want to thank you for being with me. Ramble, 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 a hundred miles an hour, but you know that's the way I am. Um, I hope this will block out a wee bit. <laughs> um, I always share something from God's word with you every podcast as I am a Christian and that's what I do um and I know if I look at the statistics on YouTube that a lot of people switch off at this point and I, that's absolutely fine that's not a bother um but if you would like to stay and just hear the wee ramble that I have in my head and on my heart from what the Lord's telling me um you're welcome to but if you're leaving me now I maybe see you at Stitch Fest um if not there i will see you the next time and thank you so much all right happy knitting and god bless bye
If you're staying with me, um, again, this is not any deep theological exegesis. I don't know how to do that. I just wanted to share something that I was just thinking about and just a wee reminder, really, um, how we should be. <laughs> you know, over the recent weeks, um, I haven't been able to get to church. Um, my husband's been away preaching and I probably could have gone with him, but you never know, like, would have to walk far and all the rest of it. Our church isn't accessible. We're trying to do something about that. Um, I you can't park outside it, the steps up to it, all the rest of it. Probably just an excuse, but anyway, I stayed home. And um the church we attend here in England doesn't broadcast their services. Again, we're doing something about that. But I was able to travel over to Ireland and up to Scotland to watch the services in our home church and to watch the service of the one we attended when we lived in Peterhead up in Scotland. Um, there were quite there have been quite a few times over the years that I've had times when I couldn't attend church and sometimes even when I could I didn't understand the language. For many of us we may have missed out when maybe our kids were small. As a midwife I often missed church because I was working um, and living in Bangladesh there was a church on the compound but even after years of learning Bangla I still couldn't always grasp what was being said. It was brilliant to watch church services on the internet or on TV um, during lockdown. I'm sure many of us found that was a real blessing. And Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his, returning is draw of his return is drawing near. There are umpteen different denominations, worship styles, big churches, small churches, the list could go on and on. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I encourage you to go to church. I encourage you to find a church, but that's not what, what I want to talk about today. My question today is, what does our faith depend on? If churches, services, our pastor, Christian leaders, we look up to Christian friends, or even our Bible was taken away, would we manage to stand strong for the Lord? Excuse me. <coughs> now, I've talked a bit about the persecuted church before, but this is about us. Would we even notice a difference? Either because all these things are just add-ons in our lives or because we have such a close walk with the Lord that these things are just lovely bonuses. If we were prohibited from owning a Bible, would it make a difference in our life? Would you not really notice as it just gathers dust up on the shelf anyway? Or you just carry it to church on a Sunday, as it's always what you've done and people might comment if you didn't have a Bible. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not spouting judgment here. I'm not. I'm looking at myself too. But the Christian faith, and I can't emphasise this enough, I'm talking about faith and not religion here, is a personal faith. If you want to hear my uh, little chat about uh, faith and not religion, go back to the near the start of my podcasts. Going to church won't save you. Coming from godly Christian parents won't save you. Good works won't save you. Talking talk won't save you. You must have your own personal faith. You must have asked Lord, the Lord into your life. And so again, I ask, what does your faith depend on? Has, have, your, have you built your faith on a firm, unshakable foundation? Do you remember the wee kids chorus maybe many of us sang when we were, we were younger at Sunday school? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock and the rains came tumbling down. We used to go, the rain came tumbling down. They probably went, whoosh. And the rains came down and the floods went, whoosh. But the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand fell flat and then you would clap your hands. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessings will come down. The blessings will come down as your prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord. You know, we used to sing that and I never thought twice about it. But that's from Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds um, a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. All the things available to us as Christians these days, they're great. 
For me, there is nothing better than lifting the roof with a good hymn, feeling the presence of the Lord in a service or feeling spiritually fed at a big conference. But I want us to come right back to basics without all of this. Just us in the quietness, our saviour, our Bible and prayer. The Bible is the true ineffable word of God. We can trust it to guide, encourage and rebuke and sustain us. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Look, don't get me wrong. There are bits of the Bible that I would rather brush over. And I would never tell anyone to open the Bible in Genesis and read right through to Revelation. If they want to do, that's fine. But by the time you hit about Leviticus and all the baguettes, you might have got a bit browned off. <laughs> Take time to get into God's word, though. All of God's word. It's a book that needs to be used and explored and maybe even committed to memory for some of it. We must be proactive and if we don't understand some things, then actively seek out help. I believe reading the Bible goes hand in hand with prayer. Asking the Lord to direct you to the word he has for you, to have the understanding and how it can be applied to our lives. Prayer is the most amazing gift. I have talked constantly about prayer on this podcast over the years but it never ceases to amaze me that he wants to hear from us listens and can come and we can come as we are he wants fellowship with us he wants a relationship with us and he has given us a very special way to do this maybe take some time today to think about what our christian lives would be like if everything else was taken away if we need to make changes to cut or carve out time in our day to prioritise spending time in his word and praying to really build that strong relationship with our saviour, our loving saviour. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So even if we aren't as strong as we, we maybe once were, once were, he never changes. So no matter what happens in life, we have a firm foundation that won't be shaken. You know I love music and you know I love hymns. And I'll leave you with the words of this very old hymn. I couldn't find the author, but it was written in 1787. But the words are perfect. I'm sorry there's a bit of noise outside. And it's how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, you who unto Jesus for refuge hath, have fled. Fear not, he is with thee, O be not dismayed, for he is thy, thy God and will still give thee aid. He'll strengthen thee, help thee and cause thee to stand, upheld by his righteous omnipotent hand. In every condition, in sickness, in health, in poverty's veil or abounding in wealth, at home and abroad, on the land and the sea, as thy days may demand, shall thy strength ever be. When through the deep waters he calls thee to go, the rivers of grief shall not thee o'erflow. For he will be with thee in trouble to bless and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, his grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, his only design, thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. The soul that in Jesus has leaned for repose, he will not, he will not desert to its foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavour to shake, he will never, no never, no never forsake. That might be a very old hymn, but the words are just fantastic. I got that out of the hymn book we use for our mission, so we still sing this hymn. As you maybe spend time today with me, I hope it has just jogged your heart, jogged your mind to just think, where am I with God? Where am I with the Saviour? Have I got a bit cold? Do I need to think what my foundations are? But I hope whatever situation you're in today, your foundations will be in the Lord. You won't put your um, house on the sandy, land, sandy um, ground that just will get washed away at the first sign of trouble. If I can help anybody, I am not uh, a deep theologian, as you well know, but if I can help anybody, if I can pray for you, if we can, um, if I can help you understand a bit more of what I've been talking about, please get in touch. I'd love to um, talk with you on email um, and um, see how I can help. 
until I see you the next time, thank you. This has been the longest ever, I just know it has. Um, I hope you've had a good time with me today and until I see you the next time, keep on knitting. God bless, bye. <music>